Hello and welcome to episode three of Ask the Buzz, the show where you send us your fishing questions and we answer them. Now this week I have none other than Jeremy Smith with me of Linder's Angling Edge. And I have a handful of questions, so we'll, we'll see what we got. Yeah, great. This will be fun. And so since, since you're sort of a musky guy, I thought this one would be appropriate. The first question is from Sam Van Handel. And he asks, as an angler on a budget that is looking to get a new musky rod, but only wants one rod, not multiple, for different baits, what style of rod do you recommend? Length, action, tip, et cetera. Sure. So that's a, that's a great question. And uh, I talk to people about that quite a bit. So for me, I mean, everybody has a little bit different take on what the right, you know, power, length, and action of a rod is for any specific application. But to me, for musky fishing, that eight and a half foot, medium, heavy, fast action rod is a dynamite rod you can do a lot of stuff with. Now, um, we fish with the, with the St. Croix series of rods, and they make that rod in a number of different series. So in terms of a, a model that I'd be looking at if you're on a budget, I definitely look at the Mojo Muskie, or I would look at the Premier series in that Muskie rod. And that 8'6", medium, heavy, fast action is going to allow you to do a lot of things. Uh, you can throw bucktails with it, of course, top waters, jerk baits, crank baits. Really the only limiter with that particular rod is throwing the big stuff, those baits that are, you know, 10, 12, 14, 16 ounces, the really big stuff. The, the, the rod can fish those baits, but the, the difficulty is with the medium heavy, it's actually lobbing those baits out there. So the, the rod's under a lot of load when you're trying to get the bait out. But in terms of it performing with those presentations, that to me is the, is the ideal musky rod. And if you go from there, you know, I would say if you're going to you say, okay, I like eight six. That's pretty good. I would favor getting a nine footer as opposed to an eight footer. I just feel that you can do a lot more with the longer rod than you can with the shorter rod. The eight six or the nine foot makes you know you can make great L turns. You get that long casting accuracy. The only reason I would say go to a slightly shorter rod would be if you're fishing a lot of targets. If you're a river fisherman and you're specifically targeting log jams or something like that, you get a little better accuracy with the shorter rod. But overall, that eight six medium heavy. Fast action is a dynamite action for muskies. Great. Well, and I thought that that was actually a pretty good question from Sam because, interestingly, in my opinion, I feel like musky fishing is one of the, um, I mean, you know, a lot of guys have a lot of rods, but it's, it's one of the species of fish that you can fish for that I feel like it's really easy to just have one rod because most of the time you're fishing with leaders and you can clip on, clip off. You're not retying knots all the time. And. Oh, totally. It's not a, it's not a, it's not bass fishing, right? Where you, you don't need 14 rods on the deck to do it. I mean, uh, your dad and I do a, a ton of musky fishing. And if I go with somebody, I, I pack three rods and I love musky. I've got lots more than that, but I have a nine foot medium, heavy, fast action, a nine foot heavy, fast action, and an eight foot, six medium, heavy, fast action. Those are the three rods I can do just about anything with, unless it's something specific like live bait fishing or trolling. But at the same time, I could get away with those yeah, same applications yeah three rods so great great question sam thanks sam question number two which one should we do here um let's go with the one from daryl k daryl kosminski and he asked what are a few good tips to get the most out of your helix 10 what's your favorite screen view and I thought this would be a good question because you do run Helix 10s. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Well, uh, thanks a bunch, Daryl, and I hope you're enjoying your Helix 10. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what model you've got, so I'm just going to assume that you've got a model that has the uh, has a side imaging view on it. Uh, one thing that uh, we run all our boats like this is we run a Y cable to our transducer. So we have both a high-speed transducer as well as a side imaging transducer. So that's going to give us our best readability for the standard 2D sonar running at high speeds. And then we've got that high frequency or the side imaging sonar that we're using for, you know, scan side imaging and down imaging. So having those two transducers, well, certainly you're, you're going to find a lot of value in having those two. You just get a better high speed readout. And then from, uh, from there, of course, I would recommend that if you purchase any of the Hummingbird products, you have to have the Lake Master technology to accompany it. That is the most powerful tool that I've ever seen come around in fishing. It's those detailed maps. And every time I hit the water with my Helix, 
I make sure to set up what you call either shallow water highlight or depth highlight. So what that does is with the Lake Master cartography, I can select the depth that I'm going to target any specific fish at. So if it was, you know, springtime crappies or something like that, I'd set the shallow water highlight to be, say, less than eight feet of water. So then everything on the map jumps out bright red. It's a really useful tool. At the same time, I almost always leave that shallow water highlight at less than five feet because it, it helps with navigation. You're not going to run over shallow mm -hmm. water or hit anything. And then with the depth highlight, you can select a certain range and those things jump out at the map at you wherever you're at. Um, another, another definitely tip going back to the transducers and setting everything up is your transducer placement. So I run most of the time, I'm in an 1875 Lund Pro Guide with a 90 Merc. So I run a tiller boat. So I set my transducers up on the side that I'm viewing the electronics from. So if I'm sitting in a tiller, my electronics are off to my left and I have the electronics or the transducers directly behind the electronics. Now, if you're in a wheel boat, I would set the transducers up on the right side because I'm always, when I'm traveling, I want those deucers behind me. So whatever side of the boat you set up your electronics, have the transducers directly behind you. It just helps if you're fishing. That's whatever you're seeing is directly where you're dropping the lure based on the position in your in your boat. And some guys will say, you know, I got this unit and it just doesn't want to read right or I can't get a high speed readout. It's amazing how when you set up your deucers that you can be off by an eighth of an inch, just that little adjustment. And you'll see how those humming bird transducers are set up. You can loosen those screws and just slightly adjust the height or you know how far up off the water that deucer is. And if you're not getting a good readout, just experiment with it, drop it an eighth of an inch, raise it an eighth of an inch, and you can see a, just a dramatic difference in the picture that you're getting on your sonar. Great, good stuff, good, good electro stuff right there. Um, so question number three I thought was pretty interesting. This one's from Joel Thompson. This is probably one of my favorite questions that we've had sent in so far. And he asks, I am fairly new to fishing and starting to build a collection of fishing equipment. How do you build a tackle collection with such a massive array of options available? Is it better to focus on a particular presentation and build around them? Or to have a broader approach that includes many techniques? How should Joel approach this? Well, first of all, Joel, good for you for getting into fishing and taking it more serious and wanting to get more involved and get more stuff. Um, that's a great question. and where do, where do you start with that? So I would guess, you know, to me, what, what you'd want to look at when you're getting into something is look at techniques that can cross a, a wide spectrum of species. I'm not exactly sure what you're going to be fishing for, but um, if you're like most of us, you love to catch just about everything that swims. So look at techniques that you can do a lot of things with. I'll use a, a jerk bait as an example. So if you took like uh, one of my all time favorite lures and uh, number 10, Rapala x -rap. This is a great lure to catch smallmouth bass. You can catch largemouth bass on it. You can catch walleyes on it. You can catch northern pike on it. Just about anything that swims will, will bite that lure. So that'd be a technique that, you know, jerk baiting would be a good one. And of course, the jig is probably the best fish catching tool of all time. Get comfortable with jigs and, and start with the selection of jigs. Start with a 16th, make your way up to a, a one ounce. And of course, jigs are made for everything from bluegills to, to muskies. But you know, with like an aspirin style head jig, you know, a VMC moon eye jig, you can fish boot tails with that, you can fish paddle tails with that, you can fish crappies, bass, all of you know, mm -hmm. all of those, all of those things. So I guess what I'm getting at here is look at some techniques that you think you can have a lot of versatility with. So, you know, jigs, you can catch everything that swims with it. In a you know, an eighth ounce jig is gonna catch smallmouth, you can catch largemouth with it, you can catch walleyes with it, you can catch big crappies with it, you can do a ton of ton of different things with that particular presentation and I'm rambling on here and I'm, I'm wondering if I'm addressing Nick all the all the elements of, of that question so yeah it's I mean I you know I think I think you did pretty good I think it so what you're basically saying is try and find a good versatile fish catching technique and maybe build around that garner some confidence in that and maybe work out from maybe a couple a couple different techniques absolutely narrow and then work your way out maybe exactly so there i mean that that's the hard part of getting out you know if i was just starting fishing i would have that same question like there's so many different options out there you walk into a you know you walk into fleet farm you got 20 aisles of tackle on both sides you work you know 
where do you really start? But some, you know, key presentations that catch just about everything, you know, a, a, a jig catches everything that swims, you know, something like a jerk bait is a great multi-species tool. You can cast, you control it and things like, you know, spinner baits you can catch bass and, and, uh, and pike on those things. They're just, they're great tools uh, to catch a bunch of fish and, and, uh, you know, that's really where I'd start, I guess, is pick something that has a lot of versatility, get familiar with it, and you can start branching out into other things. And, and you know, that's what's fun about fishing is you'll always be learning, right? So when you go out and get comfortable with a jerk bait, you'll see situations where another presentation might be better suited for that particular situation in that water that you're fishing. And then you take it to the next level, you buy the better tool for that, and you just keep, keep building it from there. Great. I think that's good. So yeah, good. <laughs> Hope that helps you, Joel. Right. Yeah, that's the important part. Yes. So last question, where are you fishing this weekend? Oh, I just got back from uh, Rainy Lake. I was up on Lake Winnebagosh and Rainy Lake, and I was doing a little musky fishing up there. So I have not spent a lot of time with my family in the last mm -hmm. five days. So just getting back late last night, I think I'll, I'll be super dad and super husband this weekend, and then hopefully Sunday I'll be able to sneak out somewhere locally and maybe try to catch catch that big muskie that's been eluding me so far. This Ooh, week. right on! So, I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that's all we have. Is there anywhere people could find you online or anything? Angling Edge Facebook page. We're always we're always there. So check us out, anglingedge.com, or visit uh, the Angling Edge Facebook page and drop us a line or Angling Buzz. Great, right here. So right on. Until next week, keep sending us questions. Cheers.